We've been working on our RAM module for a long time now, so let's make a diagram of our current system to recap. We have the bus and we have the selector IC, the 74LS157. It selects between the four address bits that come from the bus, our A value, and the four bits we set with our dip switch, called our B value. Then we have a control line that changes between a run or program mode, where run mode outputs the A value and program mode outputs the dip switch. Next, we have the actual RAM itself. The address we use to access a single byte from our RAM comes from the address selector we just talked about. Next, we have the data for the RAM in case we need to set a value for a certain byte. It goes through a doubled but otherwise equivalent selector IC and dip switch system that we'll call the same module. Now this same module has 8 bits come into it from the bus for a full byte of data and it outputs 8 bits either from the dip switch or from the bus, exactly like the address selector IC system just for 8 bits instead of 4. Now the problem is obvious here. We have an 8 bit bus but we need 12 bits of information, 4 bits for the address and 8 for the actual data. The solution is that we use two different clock cycles. Let's make a small chart to demonstrate. So the first clock cycle we put the address on the bus and it's stored in a register before going into the selector IC. Then the second cycle we put the data on the bus and we disable the load signal of the address register so that it retains the information from the previous clock cycle. So here is what our diagram will look like. We'll have 4 bits coming into the register from the bus, 4 bits coming out of the register and into the selector IC. Then we'll have a load control line so we can say load information from the bus for the first clock cycle but not the second clock cycle. Now the enable line or control signal that tells the register to output its content is tied low so it's always outputting the stored address to the selector IC. This is just so we have one less control line to worry about. Now here is our circuit so far. This doesn't have the actual RAM yet. The RAM is built just not connected. What we're seeing here is only the selector systems for the address and data. So we need to add the register for the address which is the top breadboard. Okay, so here it is with the register. These white lines are going to be the inputs from the bus, the blue line is our load enable, and the orange reddish line is our clock pulse. Now you should remember, but the last eighth bit on this dip switch toggles between program mode, which we are in now, and run mode. In program mode, you can see the LED array reflects the dip switch as it should. If we set it to run mode, then the LED array should reflect the contents of the register. Now we have random junk in the register as we should because it's just turned on. If we set the enable line low, then when the clock pulse goes high, the register should load the bus values, which are these white wires which are all connected low. And as you can see, that's what happens. So when the enable line is high, that means we don't want to load stuff from the bus, like if it's the second clock cycle. And we can verify that's true by changing the values on these white wires. As we can see, the output or LED array stays the same. This MAR is completely finished then. So we can add the RAM module and connect the address and data lines together. These orange wires are our address lines, so they'll be connected to the top LED array. The yellow wires are the data lines, so they'll be connected to the second LED array for our data module, which is working the same as the last video. Now the white wire is our write enable line, which is active low. Okay, with everything finished, we can give it a try. Right now we have something random in memory at address 0, as we can see from the 8 LEDs at the bottom. Now the data is all 1s, and we can set it to be the byte at address 0 by taking the white right enable line low. As you can see, the output of the RAM is all 1s now. If we change the address to 8, we get something random in the RAM. We can set new data for this address and then take the right enable line low to set it. Going back to address 0 though, we can see that all the ones we set previously. So this whole module is working and all that's left to do is connect what needs to be connected to the bus when we make the final CPU, but that is a final step. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Kilmo Houdin and I will catch you guys later.